Oh, hello. This is Kent, the filmmaker. I hope you enjoy this film that you're about to see. I've put it up on YouTube for free for you to enjoy, and um, perhaps if you have time, I've decided that if everybody donates just 12 cents per view, then after 50,000 views, I should break even. So without further ado, enjoy the film, The Idiocratic Life. Back then they thought that the world as they knew it was going to collapse within the next two years. So they acted as such with a very like urgent holy fuck we have to make organize something that is different than that society we have to change everything all the norms squashed everything had to be different uh it was also very i mean what you call it like maoist it was very, a big maoist influence in terms of like everything was communal okay we all sleep in the main house we all have sex with each other there's no property at all your children are not your property they're everybody's everything is collective yeah. your husband your wife is not your property everything is collective <laughs> there's no concept of the individual yeah definitely i mean we're a lot more individualistic now none of these roads are straight there's no blocks there's no like we have an address supposedly uh <laughs> but but out here my social security number does not matter you know out here my phone number is kaput because i there's I, there's no working phones and um it's just People forced to either get along and learn how to be humans with each other or you're just going to be a dick and we're going to tell you to leave. The place itself makes it impossible to do anything but what we're doing. And it, what we're doing is it's great, the way we live here. But uh, but the, the, the communal aspect of it like has gone from like 
everybody in the main house, everybody's dropping acid, everybody's gonna like immediately be super free forever now to like, you know, like a couple of hippies hanging out in the forest, smoking weed and wondering where their lives went, waiting for trim season. <laughs> Stop trying to be organized and stop trying to make us be responsible for ourselves, you know, because you don't live here is basically what people tell me. Mm -hmm. So I'm waiting. <laughs> I'm waiting and waiting and waiting until someone says, okay, your opinion matters. And now we're going to be more organized because you're on top of it and you choose that you would like to be the one to do that. Well, what I'm saying is sometimes that happens much more naturally. Like maybe people just don't like you very much because some people come in and right away accepted even though they're sure. complete strangers and they haven't been here for two months it fits and that's what from i'm saying in terms read, of from what i've understood about everything that the community says its basis was so people could come here open armed free spirited get off the city come into the mountain relax and enjoy their lives it was an all open embracing community and it was meant for people to self-sustain so as long as a person self-sustains himself I feel that they should have the right to be here. If the group of people who is living here are people who are feeding off of the freedom of the land, they're feeding off the freedom of the ranch, they're feeding off the freedom that exists, and then taking a power over the ranch to use on other people as a reason for them to have a place here. Mm -hmm. Wrong. If they are taking that power and using it as a reason to juristic that other people can't come in because they don't like them, mm -hmm. well, then they need to come up with some fucking liking. <laughs> <laughs> you can't be rude and you can't yeah. insist that your place of power yeah. on a free piece of land and ranch is going to instate that you and your ordainancy of other people's personalities, lives, life and death, existence and livelihood is going to actually matter. That's it probably, doesn't. That's the Cheers. best argument for that I've heard in a long time. Yeah, I mean, it's true. And that's, what, that's just some fucking hierarchy of genius. It all just depends on how much the place is going to function. And yeah. Because that is what this place is about, and yeah. it's true. It's never going to function in the ways that people want it to. Yeah. I just so don't agree. I think it could. I think it could. Yeah, yeah. Then, 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 some odd years. Then, 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 not just I dislike, but like, that if we're trying to do some shit and they come up trying to do some other shit and we're like, no, we're doing this, and like, no, we're doing this, and we can tell them, go fuck yourself, we're in the middle of something. Uh, so there is like a, some definite moral grounds for being selective in who you like associate with and like make resonance or whatever, because there is like an ongoing thing. I don't know. Maybe not. May I don't know. Okay. The, uh, the commune is pretty much um, without any leadership except for the residents. It's, everyone has an even say in, in everything and any issues we come together as a group and and deal with it and the work we don't assign any work to anybody everybody has their own particular talents and desires that they like to do and my personality developed on expectations that were grown by the way I see the world and what has been offered to me. All of the indulgence that has been put before me. Most of it, you know, without explanation. No real proper education in the spirit or the soul. No understanding of the balance of what some call karma. And my personality developed by these sensual inputs and my attitude and everything grew on that 
to the point where I was living in illusion. I perceived the world in the way I expected or believed that it owed me something or that, that I was supposed to grow in a particular manner. And I've come to understand that it's, it's not that way at all. There's a lot of education I missed when I was a child. You know, the um, physics of the mind, how habits are formed in a physical manner and how they can literally destroy your life if you don't understand them as early as possible. All of that stuff combined. I know so many people who they just kind of glide over the top of reality on these illusions, these perceptions, their beliefs. And it works for them. It's consuming our planet. But it works for them. It's scary out there. It's a, it's a false world. It's a world of illusions, and, and I just can't do it anymore. Everyone has different ideas of uh, life, and so like quality of life, you know, like a primitivist versus like, you know, an industrial communist or something like that. One person wants to go out and buy a whole bunch of white flour, or one person wants to like, you know, hygienically clean the whole kitchen, and meanwhile the other person's like, you know, skinning a squirrel in front of the kitchen sink, and like there's blood all over the place, and they're like, this is what we're supposed to be doing. This will make our fucking, you know, this is gonna be a sock, and that's gonna be a hat, and yeah, there's blood all over the place, but it's good for your immune system. And like, <laughs> and they're kind of right, and a lot of times, like, it's like, a lot of fresh meat is really healthy for you, but it's like, at the same time, you gotta fucking remember that there's a world out there that you gotta be a part of, you know. You know, we just have to get along with each other. That's the only stress in our lives. Yeah. We, we have power, we have water, we're off the grid. Food. We have food, you know what I mean? Just, I, it, it, we don't have any stresses, <clears throat> we make them up, and that's where, the, that's where the social, you know, that's where the social experiment, when they talk about communes, that's where that comes in. But it's rare. It's rare when you really give people a chance. You know, I think it I think it's rare. If you really give somebody a chance and just learn to let everybody's got quirks, man. Everybody's Fuck, got this quirks. This space has put people so disparately different, like you and me in the yeah. same place and we uh -huh. become friends. That wouldn't really happen on the outside, I don't think. In the same way. Personally, I've always thought that I'm open to, to other people. Right. Me too. But I don't think I would seek people out. I don't think I would be I don't think I'd be in the right headspace to like seek people out and there would all be all tons of other distractions that I would be involved in. Yeah. Well, the odds of you and I ever meeting. Right. We would, we would, we would never go to the same places. Right. You know, anywhere on earth, we wouldn't, you and I would not choose to would, we'll go into a city and you'd say, I want to go here. And I'd say, I want to go there. Right. <laughs> we, we, our paths would never cross, cross only it. here. I, I thought I was coming to a place where I didn't have to convince people or try to articulate the most basic aspects of my world views, I guess. But it came to a place where, you know, there's... I don't know. I mean, the mixture of people here is completely random. There's no sense to it at all. <laughs> We determined that John was an anarcho-fascist. Yeah. <laughs> anarcho wow. That doesn't make That's any sense. That's a blend and a half, man. It's just, just give it time, man. It's just like anarcho-capitalist, man. Same thing. I would say John. I mean, you can't just make up a name. Anarcho-capitalist is a philosophy, man. Read my book.
there's people who are fucking it up for the rest of the people. And uh, when you point that out, they don't like you. And there is a certain amount of fear. You know, I was arrested in Oakland doing political shit. And uh, uh, I was arrested in Chicago too. And uh, I don't like being arrested. They've called me an anarchist, you know, like, they, they think I'm an anarchist, I think I'm an anarchist, we all think I'm an anarchist, I'm an anarchist. The reason it works is because the people can destroy anything that's going to try to build a hierarchy. Problem is that human nature very often goes to that point. One of the problems with anarchy is that you're very often going to build up to this almost utopia point, maybe a utopia point, and then there's going to be somebody who's going to put a ripple in that. And the pro you know, you just have to remove that one thing, you know. It's the same thing within life. You can keep getting beat down, you can keep getting beat down, but if you don't eventually hit back, you're just going to be killed off. There's levels. I mean I believe in I believe in liberty and I believe in autonomy for people, but I don't believe in anarchy. We need the government to do shit. You expect the fucking water to come out of the tap because the government runs the network that you're on. Like, and then, you know, anarchists complain about the government, but then they go into the city and fucking use their food stamps at the Whole Foods. So it's like... I know. Uh, I love them. <laughs> anarchists. You know, as, as many times as I've sat around here, you know, talking about... Um, the different levels of government yeah you know this and that and different philosophies and all that's the same thing all of them work yeah every single one of these political they ideals that these guys have they work all of them work in theory it all no all of them work it all changes when you get to a certain population oh yes when yeah. and that is it's all about yeah. the human factor yeah. all of it and all of these ideas work yeah. perfectly yeah. except you get to a certain level and then not everybody's on board they want to do their own thing right it's humans right so you know you bitch about it you know you're 23 years old you come from the suburbs you've never been oppressed in your life just because there's a fear just because it's overwhelming and it's bullshit doesn't it's still a cop-out coming out here is still like it's still as if we're hiding and I came out here with the intention of I'm gonna go learn how to deal with my shit because I feel like I'm not at all prepared to live without these people that are oppressing everyone and there's things happening things are getting more and more radical everywhere there's you know the whole financial shit is collapsing and whatever as it always is but people are taking more and more notice of that and uh, places like this this is a uh, not connected to that, which is good, but it, it's also bad because it's harder to, it's a harder place to fight from. It's an easy place to defend, but it's a hard place to make a positive change in the rest of the world because the people come out here and they have their ideals and, you know, dreams get broken by the reality of like, no man, no, all you gotta do is chop some wood and that's what's going on here. And you're not you're not making the world a better place by being here. You're just making your world a better place by being here. Here, we don't call ourselves radicals and don't rely on the state. As much. We don't rely on the state for shit. People well, have food stamps or whatever. Calling, well, we can grow all on our own food and tell the crazies who want to come visit. If you're calling the state the people who, the corporations that control all the food supply, which it is... We rely on them. We, we don't grow wrong. We are so much more capable of taking care of ourselves. Than the city kids, yeah. But I can, we're not self-sufficient. I can brew enough beer to buy all the shit we need. Buy it from who? Who's producing the huh? food? If we weren't overflowing with visitors who didn't know what was going on, I am confident that we could provide all of our needs here. No way. I'm positive. If even, it came down to it... Even if... It, if if the state collapsed tomorrow, oh, whatever. you wouldn't you cut down so a couple of trees? Cut, cut down a couple of trees, grow some more food, and we pay more we, attention to it. We, don't we have not that. even been able to get our shit together enough to cultivate the entire meadow. The every year, is there's, there's something... Yeah. There's something new. You have a bunch of people. Yeah. The people that plant it aren't the same people that are at <laughs> harvest. You have to have somebody that has some kind of idea of what's going on. And that a lot of people come through right with community that is what there's a lot of hands in the garden and this year we're on top of it but we have people that have been here a season yeah we were here last season we saw the mistakes and we're trying yeah. um 
But to, to think that right now we could grow all our food is ridiculous. Yeah, we get snowed in and we sometimes have to anticipate that and park a vehicle at the bottom of the trail so we can at least hike out that way and hike supplies back in. So we get down to eating a lot of lentils and quinoa and beans. Uh. It's not like you're going to starve because, you know, uh, food stamps, whatnot. But when you fuck up, is beans and rice. That's what happens when we fail as a community. We eat beans and rice for a long ass time. Mm. Let's have some fun, but not like four months in a row, man. It's hard. Yeah, it's a little rough. Well, yeah, we'll like beans and rice, but not beans and rice. Lentils. And lentils, yeah. It's hard. We're not we should have gotten spastic on your ass it. for that, but yo, we didn't. Yo, 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 yo. Get over it. You're Check right. this out. No, no, no. Both you guys, you gotta I listen to me for a second. Think. Listen to me for a second before you get all heated. Some people before. eat too much. And other people, they, they don't eat enough. The secret is to eat just enough. How do you diffuse every situation by acting like Woody Allen? It's cool. <laughs> what the fuck are you talking you're like, you're like, I'm trying you're to like, be serious, like, goddammit. Some, what the people, fuck is the matter with some people enjoy wood chips, and other people enjoy God. Oh, look at me, I'm touting. <laughs> oh, no. oh, my God. You've taken my attention. I'm a parody of myself. <laughs> ah, what a paradox. <laughs> It sucks because you, you know, people come out here and you can see it in their faces like, oh, if I'm rejected here, this is the end. You know, this is the end of the line for a lot of people. If you have a problem that can't be fixed, you're going to have to leave. If you have a problem with the society here, you're going to have to leave. If you have a, pro a problem with society outside, there's no place to go.